Welcome to another show. This week we're going to take a look at top 5 things you probably didn't know about Valley of Guanji. Guanji. No, no. Leave it. He who takes from Guanji the evil one is cursed. Valley of Guanji is a 1969 American fantasy western film produced by Charles H. Schneer and Ray Harryhausen, directed by Jim O'Connelly, written by William Bast, and starring James Franciscus, Richard Carlson, and Gila Golan. Creature stop-motion effects were by Harryhausen, the last dinosaur-themed film that he animated. Producer Charles Schneer called it probably the least of the movies Ray and I made together. I remember watching this film when I was a kid several times on late night TV. We had a local horror show on Bangor main television called Shock Theater. Sometimes it was even hosted by Stephen King himself, as he was from Bangor. I loved this film and owned it on VHS tape, which I recorded from these showings. From Wikipedia, the plot revolves around a cowgirl named T.J. Breckenridge in Mexico at the turn of the 20th century hosting a struggling rodeo. Her former lover, Tuck Kirby, a heroic former stuntman working for Buffalo Bill's Wild West show, wants to buy her out. Along the way, Buffalo Bill wants to buy Omar the Wonder Horse. He's offering a good price. And you get 10%, right? 20. He is followed by a Mexican boy named Lopi. What about an interpreter? Don't need an interpreter. You need a horse, senor. Now look, boy, I told you I don't need anything. Now get lost, comprende? who intends to join the rodeo on a quest for fame and fortune. TJ is not interested in Tuck because of this, but Tuck is still attracted to TJ, especially when TJ jumps off a diving board on her horse. TJ finally accepts Tuck when he saves Lopi from a bull and Tuck and TJ kiss. TJ has an ace she hopes will boost attendance at her show, a tiny horse called El Diablo. Tuck meets a British paleontologist named Horace Bromley, my father used to say it is not good to dig up the past. Let sleeping dogs lie, eh? <laughs> oh, we're not gonna get very far that way now, are we? Who is working in a nearby Mexican desert. Bromley shows Tuck fossilized horse tracks, and Tuck notes their similarity to El Diablo's feet. Tuck sneaks Bromley into the circus for a look at El Diablo. That sort of depends on where you want to get to, doesn't it? To the bottom of things, of course. What Darwin did with his theory of evolution, I intend to do with my theory of the humanoid. And Bromley declares the horse to be a prehistoric Eohippus. The tiny horse came from a place known as the Forbidden Valley. A gypsy known as Tia Zarina claims that the horse is cursed. From there came the little horse. And until he is returned, a great evil will fall upon us. Superstitious claptrap. There's nothing hocus pocus about that little horse. Don't you realize we've discovered a living specimen of the Eohippus? and demands that it be immediately returned. Later, she and the other gypsies collaborate with Bromley to steal El Diablo and release it back in the valley. Bromley hopes to follow the horse to its home in search of other prehistoric specimens. Carlos, an ex-member of the gypsy tribe now working for TJ Circus, walks in on the theft and tries to stop it. We can do what we like with Guanji. He is our property. He belongs to us all, to mankind, to scientific research. Easy, Professor. You can do your research in the time we give you. But is knocked out, making their way into the Forbidden Valley. Tuck, TJ, and the rest of the group meet up and soon discover why the valley is said to be cursed when a pteranodon swoops down and snatches Lopi, but due to the weight it falls back to the ground. <laughs> After Carlos kills the pteranodon by twisting its neck, they spot an Ornithomimus, which they chase after in the hopes of capturing it. Just as it is about to escape, it is killed by Guanji, a vicious Allosaurus which chases Bromley and the rest of the group. However, a Styracosaurus appears and drives Guanji away. As Guanji leaves, he takes the dead pteranodon with him, securing the creature with ropes. Tuck and the other men in the group take Guanji back to town to be put on display in TJ's show. Don't you see we could both sell out, buy the place, build it up into a really big ranch, raise a bunch of cattle and, and horses. And kids, maybe? On the opening day of the show, the dwarf gypsy sneaks in and begins to unlock Guanji's cage in an effort to free him, only to be killed when Guanji breaks free. The crowd begins to flee as Guanji attacks, 
and Tia's arena is trampled to death in the chaos. Bromley is crushed by a broken piece of the cage, and Guaji attacks and kills a circus elephant before rampaging through the town. Tuck, accompanied by TJ and Lopi, tries to hide the crowd in a cathedral, but Guanji finds them and breaks in. Tuck urges the crowd out through a back exit, leaving Tuck inside with Guanji, TJ, and Lopi. The film ends when Guanji is trapped in a burning church and is destroyed. A similar film, The Beast of Hollow Mountain released in 1956 from United Artists produced by a Mexican film company and also employing stop-motion effects, but not by Harryhausen, was the only other feature film in the history of cinema to have the unusual story combination of cowboys and dinosaurs. Charles Schneer had the script rewritten by William Bast and offered the project to Columbia who had made all Schneer's previous collaborations with Harryhausen. The studio turned it down, but Warner Brothers agreed to finance. James O'Connelly signed to direct. According to Harryhausen, we got trapped in a change of management shuffle at Warner Brothers. If only they had publicized it properly. They just dumped the picture on the market. A lot of people who would have loved it never got a chance to see it. Never knew it was playing. The new administration didn't give it the kind of release I expected, said Schneer. They didn't know how to market our type of picture as well as Columbia did. It was their money and their property, and they did what they wanted. I had no rapport with that new management. There was nothing I could do to change their minds. The film was released with little promotional effort on a double bill with a biker film. It thus missed its target audience and was not as successful as earlier Harryhausen efforts, but has since become a cult classic. It has 80% positive rating on Rotten Tomatoes. The scene where Guanji suddenly appears from behind a hill and snatches the fleeing Ornithomimus in his jaws was later copied in Steven Spielberg's big-budget dinosaur film, Jurassic Park. During the 1980s hit TV series Scarecrow and Mrs. King, any time the television was shown on in the series, the Valley of Guanji was on the screen. And now, let the countdown begin. Number 5. It was originally going to be a follow-up to King Kong. Special effects pioneer Willis H. O'Brien began pre-production at the RKO Path Studios on a story by Harold Lamb about a huge T-Rex called Gwen G, with John Speaks as producer, in 1941. The project was cancelled when studio management was changed. An early band W version of the Cowboys in Africa footage was shot, and wound up being used in Mighty Joe Young. Number 4 This was the last film billed as Dynamation. Starting with Ray Harryhausen's next film, The Golden Voyage of Sinbad, Dynamation would be rebranded as Dynorama. Number 3. Production was a nightmare. Filmed in 1967, but not released until 1969 due to extensive post-production problems. The film was in production for over a year and a half. The dinosaur rope sequence alone took more than two and a half months to complete, but shortly before production ended, the studio management changed, and the new bosses had little confidence in the film, which was released with very little publicity and failed at the box office. Number 2. Borrowed Music Composer Jerome Moras reused his own music when scoring Guanji where the opening title theme is identical to that used in the climactic Blanco Canyon sequence in the 1956 big-budget western The Big Country starring Gregory Peck, Charlton Heston, and Chuck Connors. Number 1. Reused Models Ray Harryhausen created Guanji the Allosaurus in the film Styracosaurus by repurposing the skeletons he had previously created as the Ceratosaurus and Triceratops, respectively, from 1 million years BC from 1966. That was our show for today. What did you think? Have you seen Valley of Guanji? Do you like the films of Ray Harryhausen? Are you a James Franciscus fan? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. While you're at it, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel, click the bell to stay informed and check out my Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter franchise also in the comments section. Until next time this is Axel and for Kevin Given saying live long and prosper, may the force be with you, and keep reaching for the stars.